Good morning. Welcome to today's virtual presser to discuss the Philippines ranking in the Global Innovation Index 2021. We are delighted to have you all here and we hope that everyone is looking forward to an exciting and promising day ahead of us. This event is organized by the Department of Science and Technology with other Philippine government offices and the World Intellectual Property Office or WIPO. My name is Aidana and I am your host for today's event. The Global Innovation Index or GII is an annual reporting of the innovation performance of 132 countries. Innovation is known to be a key driver in economic growth and development. The GII provides insightful data to help countries evaluate their performance based on world standards to help and guide various stakeholders in mapping out plans for improvement and other development programs. The development that we want to happen in the Philippines will not be possible without working together. Allow me to acknowledge the people and offices who tirelessly work for a better Philippines. We have Secretary Ramon M. Lopez from the Department of Trade and Industry, Secretary Gregorio B. Honasan II, Department of Information and Communications Technology, Secretary Carl Kendrick P. Chua, National Economic and Development Authority. With him is Undersecretary Rosemary Edelion. We also have Director General Roel S. Barba, Intellectual Property Office of the Philippines, Secretary Delphine N. Lorenzana, Department of National Defense, Secretary Francisco T. Duque, from the Department of Health. Secretary William Didar from the Department of Agriculture. Secretary Roy A. Simatu, Department of Environment and Natural Resources. Secretary Alfonso G. Cusi from the Department of Energy. With him is Undersecretary Felix William B. Fuentebella. We also have Secretary Arthur P. Tugade from the Department of Transportation, Secretary Teodoro L. Oxin, Jr. from the Department of Foreign Affairs, Chairperson Prospero E. De Vera from the Commission on Higher Education. And to our friends from the media, colleagues, thank you for joining us in this event. Should you have questions, we will be entertaining them towards the end of the program. Kindly type in your questions in our Q&A tab if you are in the Zoom webinar or comment section if you are in our Facebook Live. May I also request that you state your name, affiliation, and the person you are directing your question to. To begin the program and to give us a welcome message, let us give a virtual round of applause for DOSD Secretary Fortunato T. De La Peña. Good morning, Secretary. Thank you. Good morning. Warmest greetings to Dr. Sacha Wons Vincent and Mr. Marco Aleman of the World Intellectual Property Office. Our esteemed country representatives, we have Secretary Carl Kendrick Chua, accompanied by uh, uh, De Deputy or Undersecretary Rosemary Edilion. We have Secretary Roy Simato. We have Secretary Alfonso Cusi, accompanied by Undersecretary Felix Pentadelia. We have Secretary William Dar, Secretary Francisco Duque, Secretary Gregorio Honasan, Secretary Ramon Lopez, Secretary Delphine Lorenzana, Secretary Arthur Tugade, Chad Chairman Prospero de Vera. IPO Director General Roel Barba, to all our guests this morning. Welcome to this uh, virtual presser to mark another year of recognizing the Global Innovation Index, and this is for 2021. As we all know, the Philippines landed at rank 50 in the Global Innovation Index 2020. 
such feat brought so much pride and honor to the country, and we are still basking on the thrill of this achievement. It was a great leap from our initial ranking of 100 way back in 2014. The Philippines started to harvest the fruits of our innovation efforts in 2018 when we jumped to the 73rd spot. Then in 2019, we further moved up to the 54th rank and for the first time, the Philippines broke into the ranks of innovation achievers, being one of the most improved in almost all of the relevant key indicators. Indeed, the GII serves as the country's metrics and reference in assessing our science, technology, and innovation standing in both the local and international science communities, guiding us to further improve the country's STI ecosystem. Then COVID-19 came, seemingly disrupting the progress we have made. The pandemic has obviously brought negative impacts in the implementation of our science, technology, and innovation activities. In the first few months of the pandemic, it was like the world came to a halt. The whole country was in lockdown and the constraints in mobility limited our capabilities to continue most of the R&D initiatives being pursued. Amidst these challenges, however, the department became flexible enough and has adopted timely strategies, enabling the country to respond to the situation at hand. Aware that priorities have changed, the DOST focused its initiative on R&D programs and projects that would prove extremely useful in this time of the pandemic. Our programs have led to the development of diagnostic or test kits, biomedical devices, disease models, and surveillance applications, among others. We have likewise heightened our initiatives on food security with programs and projects geared towards improving crop, livestock, and fisheries production. In addition, the department strengthened its collaboration with stakeholders that allowed value-adding activities to ensure food resiliency in the new normal. The pandemic also brought in the forefront our need to speed up our efforts in terms of health, research, and development. We already have in place the Tuktas Lunas, or the Drug Development and Discovery Program, in support of drug discovery and development. And now we are on the verge of establishing the Virology and Vaccine Institute of the Philippines. Very soon, I hope the Philippines would be able to develop its own brand of vaccines for use of the Filipinos and other nations as well. Now more than ever, the Filipino people are looking up to science, technology, and innovation for solutions to their problems. The demand drives the department further to continuously support our researchers, scientists, and engineers, and the aspiring ones. In the last four years, our scholarship programs produced over 500 Master of Science and uh, PhD graduates in the science, technology, engineering, and mathematics fields at different level per year and awarded more than 10,000 of these MS PhD scholarships across the country from which more than 4,000 scholars have already graduated. The department continuously engages Filipino experts both local and abroad through the RD lead component of our Science for Change program and our Balik Scientist program to further advance our contributions to science, technology, and innovation. You must have heard that recently seven Balik scientists came home to assist us in our proposed Virology and Vaccine Institute. To date, the program has also engaged 42 of our national experts in R&D uh, to all the regions of our country. And uh, we have uh, so far a total of 577 Balik scientists across regions. The DOST also recognizes the need to ensure the stability of its own workforce. This led us to create a science and technology fellows program, which aims to increase and strengthen the human resource complement of DOST in terms of policy funding, development, monitoring, evaluation, 
as well as R&D programs and projects implementation in order to attain the aspired socioeconomic impact. We draw these S&T fellows from our graduates in the graduate program. Another goal that we want to achieve is the passage of the Science for Change or S4C bill, which would allow the department to provide more financing for science, technology, and innovation through leveraging and partnerships between enterprises, businesses, and universities or government research and development institutions. It will allow the establishment of more R&D and innovation centers in the regions under our NICER program, thereby ensuring that R&D funding will be spread across the country. This is our strategy for real inclusive development. Our ultimate goal, of course, is inclusive innovation for all Filipinos. This year, the Philippines ranks 51st among 132 economies in the GII. We might have slipped a notch, but the DOST remains committed in bringing, bringing science closer to society, empowering Filipino-made breakthroughs and innovations to increase productivity and drive prosperity. With such goal in mind, I am confident that our aspiration of belonging to the upper echelons of the GII innovation achievers is never far behind. Thank you and good day to everyone. Thank you for that warm welcome and motivational message, Sekboy. Thank you for giving us an overview of the country's initiatives in the science, technology, and innovation. Before moving forward, we would like to acknowledge the presence of Assistant Secretary Sheila Napalang of the Department of Transportation. Good morning, Assistant Secretary, and welcome. Moving along, to give us an opening message, may I call on Mr. Marco M. Aleman, Assistant Director General on IT and Innovations Ecosystem Sector of the World Intellectual Property Organization. Good morning, Mr. Aleman. I'm pleased to present the 2021 edition of the Global Innovation Index at the occasion of the report launch in the Philippines. Let me start by expressing gratitude to the government of the Philippines and the Department of Science and Technology for hosting this year's Philippine launch of the GII. In particular, I would like to express my gratitude to Fortunato de la Peña, Secretary of the Department of Science and Technology, Secretary Ramon Lopez of the Department of Trade and Industry, and Director General Ro Will Barda of the Intellectual Property Office of the Philippines, and to all of the members of the executive branch of the Philippines participating in today's event, who are part of the whole of government approach in fostering the innovation ecosystem in the Philippines. What is the purpose and impact of the GII? Well, innovation is recognized as a central driver of economic growth and development. GII is one example of how we at the World Intellectual Property Organization use our expertise to support our member states in promoting innovation. This is not something only theoretical. It is something with real and concrete impact. Specifically, a few dozen countries, including the Philippines, work with the GII to improve the national and regional innovation performance. This is the first year that the publication is housed within the newly created IP and innovation ecosystem sector under my supervision. How is the GI particularly relevant in the COVID-19 and economic recovery context? First and foremost, it is important to understand how the pandemic impacted current innovation levels and effort. The GI indeed finds that innovation rich and all time high prior to the pandemic. When the pandemic hit, the big question was, what is effect on innovation would be? And this year, GI provide a first answer to this question. Indeed, the GI 2021 shows that the innovation sector of the global economy have largely been resilient despite severe disruptions. Second, it's important to understand how to overcome the pandemic 
and build back better. As the world looks to rebuild from the pandemic, we know that innovation is integral to overcoming the common challenges that we face and to constructing a better future. Let me now turn to the performance of the Philippines in the Global Innovation Index. The Philippines continues to lead by example to other developing countries in setting innovation as a national priority. The entry into force of the 2019 Philippine Innovation Act, proposing the GI as a measurement and assessment tool of the innovation performance of the country, is the clearest example of the Philippines government's effort to foster innovation in the economy, making it a vital component of national development and sustainable economic growth. Other countries are following suit and seeking to imitate the integration of clear performance targets and the GI in their innovation laws. The Philippines ranks 51st in these years in the Global Innovation Index. Together with China and the Turkey, Vietnam and India, the Philippines is part of the group of the only five countries which made significant progress in the GI innovation rankings, rankings over time. In the report, we released in Geneva yesterday, it is singled out as economy which is changing the global innovation landscape for good. I would like to thank all of the agency leaders and movers who have taken part in the sustaining and fostering the innovation ecosystem in the Philippines and to encourage them to continue translating innovations into tangible solutions to national problems and to positive change. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Aleman. It is very rewarding to hear those uplifting words from you. Moving on, let us now hear the messages from our key partners in our continued pursuit of innovation. Kindly direct your attention to our screen. To deliver the first message, let us hear from Secretary Ramon M. Lopez from the Department of Trade and Industry. Good morning, Secretary. Secretary Boyd de la Peña, fellow secretaries and fellow workers in government, our private sector partners, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It is my honor to join our country's innovation champions in discussing the Philippine performance in this year's Global Innovation Index. The GII has always served as a valuable source of insight for us in recognizing advancements in our country's innovation policies and programs and identifying crucial areas that require further action. Our new industrial policy, the Inclusive Innovation Industrial Strategy, or IQS, places innovation at the heart of the country's economic transformation by growing globally competitive and innovative industries. In recent years, we have focused our efforts in strengthening national and regional innovation and entrepreneurship ecosystems by forging government industry academic collaboration, enabling a strong business and policy environment, and upskilling our creative talent pool. Our experience validates the strong potential of innovation to catalyze job creation, upgrade industrial competitiveness, and attract high-value investments. This year, we continue to perform better in terms of innovation outputs compared to our innovation inputs. This means that we were able to produce more and higher quality innovation outputs despite our limited innovation resources and pandemic-induced setbacks. This is reflected in the GII observation that the Philippines continues to be among the countries that perform above expectations given our current level of development. The 2021 GII highlights that many industrial competitiveness indicators remain to be the country's strengths. We rank first in the world in both high technology exports and imports as percent of trade while maintaining the 10th place in creative goods export as percent of trade. Notably, domestic market scale, trade openness, firms offering formal training, and ICT services exports also continue to be among our country's strengths. The report 
also points out salient indicators that merit stronger future policy action, including ease of getting credit, inflow of venture capital, creation of new businesses, ease of doing business, and attracting global corporate R&D investments. We have seen that with the right collaborators, our country's entrepreneurial and innovative people can boost and optimize their discovery potential and serve as a primary engine of economic development, especially amidst the fourth industrial revolution. As envisioned by President Rodrigo Roa Duterte, this is the best way by which we can spur new enterprises, create more and better jobs, and build our industrial competitiveness towards a more comfortable life for all Filipinos. Maraming salamat po at mabuhay tayong lahat and once again, congratulations. Thank you, Secretary Lopez, for your efforts in creating a better and competitive Philippines amidst this pandemic. To move forward, let us now hear from Secretary Gregorio B. Honasan II from the Department of Information and Communications Technology. Good morning, Secretary. DOST Secretary Boy de la Peña, DA Secretary Willie Dar, DNR Secretary Roy Simato, DND Secretary Del Lorenzana, DOE Secretary Al Cusi, DOH Secretary Pinkoy Duque, DOTR Secretary Art Tugade, DTI Secretary Mon Lopez, DFA Secretary Ted Doxin Jr., Chair Chairman Popoy De Vera, IPOFIL DG Roel S. Barba, NEDA Director General Carl Kendrick Chua, Dr. Sacha Wunks Vincent, Co-Editor of the Global Innovation Index, WIPO, Mr. Marco Matias Aleman, Assistant Director General at the YPO, DOST Undersecretary Rowena Cristina L. Guevara, fellow speakers, colleagues in government, friends, ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning. Your Department of Information and Communications Technology has the primary policy, planning, coordinating, and implementing an administrative entity of the executive branch of the government that will plan, develop, and promote the national ICT development agenda as mandated by the Public Act 10844 expresses our utmost commitment to lead the country towards digital transformation, to keep up with the accelerating pace of change in the global digital economy. With today's launch of the Global Innovation Index, or GII 2021, we hope to gain more insights as we discuss the latest ranking of innovation performance of economies around the globe. This would put our efforts into perspective and help us formulate more relevant and strategic solutions moving forward. We also hope to examine how the pandemic and the new normal has shaped the global innovation landscape. This would allow us to explore the role of innovative technologies in our own economic recovery efforts to help the country and the Filipino people bounce back from the slowdown caused by the pandemic. With that, I enjoin everyone to join hands as we advance the national ICT agenda. We recognize that despite our initial efforts, we still need to further our understanding of the dynamics of digital innovation. By continually collaborating and learning from each other, we hope to develop a more holistic and informed approach to developing the nation's innovation landscape. Surely, by working together with my colleagues in government here today, we can achieve even greater strides in the GII ranking for the years to follow. For our part, your DICT will continue to future-proof our programs, reforms, projects, and policies to benefit our most precious and strategic renewable resource, our children. Thank you, and magtulungan po tayo.
Thank you, Secretary Honasan, for leading our country in moving forward into a digital era. Next, let us also hear from Director General Roel S. Barba from the Intellectual Property of the Philippines. Good morning, uh, Director General. Yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, Idona. To my uh, favorite uh, members of the cabinet, Secretary Mon Lopez and Secretary Boy de la Pena, the uh, other distinguished uh, members of the cabinet, my friend, Under Secretary Rowena Guevara, fellow workers in government, good morning. Once again, the GII showed that we have risen above the odds in these trying times, creating more quality outputs despite having very little support in investments. As always, we take pride in our resilience and our resourcefulness as Filipinos. But while we celebrate this, I hope we are overtaken by the more important reflections and emotions. And these are the sense of urgency, the fear of being left behind, and specifically for us in government, the knowledge of the greater responsibility to deliver. Our innovators and creators may have the ideas, but without the investments to convert ideas to reality, without the well-orchestrated pathways to lead one startup to a successful exit, without the resources to grease up our runway to greater innovative capacity, there remains little cause for celebration. Filipinas' works will continue to be unfinished masterpieces. Our greatest untapped asset, if we do not direct more resources and attention to innovation, creativity, and intellectual property. As a member of the National Innovation Council, the IPOFIL is urging for the creation of task forces and address areas on institutions, human capital and research, infrastructure, and market sophistication that weigh us down in our GII performance. When I was under Secretary of the Competitiveness and the Ease of Doing Business Group at the Department of Trade and Industry, we did this with the World Bank Doing Business Survey, which led to the drastic 29-notch improvement in the Philippine ranking in 2020, ranking 95th out of 190 economies, tying the highest rank ever achieved by the Philippines. We can consider emulating this and we might just repeat its success. We're also backing the faster formation of innovation alliances pushed for under the Innovation Act. These alliances will encourage companies to engage in collaborative research with the academy. As you all know, the university industry R&D collaboration indicator suffered the fifth biggest decline score among all indicators. Our agency with our program to capacitate the patent capabilities of many universities, colleges, and research centers is ready to help improve this area. For our part at IPOFIL, we will do more to help Philippine innovators and creators see the value of their work through the lens of IP. We will continue to pursue more institutional reforms where IP is in a higher place in the national recovery and greater innovation agenda. Thank you and a good morning to all. Salamat ng Madame Director General Barba for your message. Indeed, we have to make our ideas into reality by working together. Next, let us also hear from Secretary Delphine N. Lorenzana from the Department of National Defense. Dr. Sasha Vincent and Marco Aliman of the World Intellectual Property Organization, fellow cabinet secretaries, friends, ladies and gentlemen, good day. The Department of National Defense takes pride in the Philippines' current standing in the Global Innovation Index 2020, climbing to the 50th from its previous rank of 106 years ago, out of 131 countries. This was attributed to the country's strong performance in high-tech trade, ICT service, 
creative goods, and research talent. Undoubtedly, the pandemic has compelled us to improve our digital ecology and innovative systems in order to respond to complex and volatile situations. This is a testament to the Filipinos' resilience and ingenuity, finding opportunity even in the midst of adversity. This will inspire us more to modernize our processes for better compatibility and interoperability with fast evolving systems. Innovation is an integral aspect of our institutional goals. As chairperson of the National Task Force against COVID-19, I have seen how digital solutions has in our pandemic response in terms of logistics, relief operations, and recently the vaccination rollout. Under the AFP modernization program, the defense sector strives to arrive at data-driven decisions, create efficient systems for the military, and integrate technology in public governance. The National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council has also applied new methodologies and technological interventions in doing relief and rescue operations. The use of dashboards has synchronized national to local government unit response in real-time basis. These improvements have saved the lives of many Filipinos in disaster-stricken areas. Indeed, the COVID-19 pandemic has pushed us to explore non-traditional ways of providing public services. Through sustained cooperation with the Department of Science and Technology, the scientific community, and the private sector, we boldly venture into digital transformation. Thus, I convey our ardent support to research and development initiatives that would fuel innovation in our national landscape. Maraming salamat at mabuhay tayong lahat. Thank you, Secretary Lorenzana, for presenting how resilient we Filipinos are, and thank you for your efforts in providing ease within this pandemic. For our next message, let us also hear from Secretary Francisco T. Duque from the Department of Health. A pleasant day to all who are sharing their time with us today. As we continue grappling with the COVID-19 pandemic, we are still ensuring ample efforts to advance universal health care. The new normal is characterized by greater volatility and uncertainty than any other time in modern memory. The onus on the government is to implement intervention that increases society's confidence in the optimization of economic activities despite the threat of COVID-19. The pandemic has required a response that cuts across all sectors and aspects of life, from health to commerce. Accordingly, these concerns must inform our actions moving forward. This pandemic likewise has become the new arena within which we continue to implement reforms needed to fulfill the UHC promise. COVID-19 may have derailed the lives that we are used to living, but it has not derailed the UHC implementation. It paved the way for the government to think through its strategies to fulfill the UHC promise while responding to the pandemic. It is clear to us that implementing the UHC law and responding to the COVID-19 pandemic are symbiotic. The system that the UHC seeks to strengthen is the same system that responds to the pandemic. The COVID-19 pandemic necessitated a comprehensive shift in our efforts. We know that we will continue to face bottlenecks, so we must continue to strive to introduce innovative solutions anchored to future thinking, using new tools and technologies to address the challenges ahead and realize a truly responsive UHC. As we further adjust our plan to properly catch up with our timeline as mandated by the law, 
We remain committed to keeping track with statutory mandates critical to expediting the implementation of uh, UHC. On that front, though we may be expediting the implementation, the three goals of the health system remain at the center of UHC, even if targets are often evaluated and accordingly adjusted. Additionally, the national objectives for health also shape our efforts and initiatives. These cover five critical areas of financing, access to essential health services, certification of service quality, and assurance of affordability, leadership and management capacity building, and overall excellence in governance. While prevention is the best cure, we continue to advance complementary strategies for healthcare promotion, an example of which is telemedicine and telehealth. These are critical tools to support home care for COVID-19. Further, the establishment of one hospital command allowed us to link health services and improve alignment of available care and patient needs towards improved matching of the demand and supply sides of our healthcare facilities. As of September 16, we have engaged with over 61,000 consultations since its start of operation, with over 59,000 of these being closed transactions. And lastly, our COVID-19 vaccination campaign serves as one of our flagship strategies to defeat the pandemic. As of September 16, we have already administered over 40 million doses, with almost 18 million of this being the completion of doses necessary to attain the full protection from these vaccines. These interventions will help further strengthen our health system capacity and prevent our health facilities from being overwhelmed. By delivering on the UHC promise, we will beat COVID-19 and stand ready to combat future pandemics. With this fusion of efforts, we hope to establish a health system that can readily meet the evolving needs of a society whose behaviors have changed from passive acceptance of health services to the appropriate health-seeking behavior cognizant of their right to health. At the core of the UHC implementation, as we have seen in effective COVID-19 response, the whole of society approach is indeed crucial. It is my hope that the discussions in this event can spark the conversations that we need at the moment, not just to see us to the end of the pandemic, but to carry us beyond it. Our road to recovery remains long, but if we work together, then I am sure that we can overcome whatever challenge comes our way. Let's pave the way for achieving UHC in the new normal. UHC must be our new normal. Maraming salamat po. Thank you, Secretary Duque, for your relentless efforts as we continue our battle against COVID-19. Let us also hear from Secretary William Didar from the Department of Agriculture. Good morning, Secretary Dar. Fellow workers in government, distinguished guests from the World Intellectual Property Organization, our friends from media, ladies and gentlemen, a pleasant morning to everyone. Today's virtual presser on the Philippine ranking in the Global Innovation Index for 2021 comes at a timely moment as we are all eager to know how our economy is coping with the effects of the COVID-19 by innovating our processes, resources, and technologies. As our country slowly recovers from the crippling effects of the pandemic, our mindset is focused on seeking new prospects for growth and development. And this is where innovation plays a critical role. Innovation in terms of technology and knowledge will help our country move forward in terms of promoting economic growth, creating jobs and investments, as well as finding solutions to major challenges such as energy security. 
For one, this pandemic made us realize the importance of digital transformation in the way we do business. The use of digital platforms helped both government and private sector ensure the continuity of its businesses and services to the public. For the energy sector, innovations form part of our energy planning activities and projects in the areas of research and development, resource and technology promotion, policy formulation, and process improvement. Allow me to share some of them. One, the clean energy scenario of the Philippine Energy Plan 2020 to 2040 gives more focus on the contribution of clean energy fuels and technologies such as renewable energy and energy efficiency and technologies. Two, the study on the potential emerging fuels such as hydrogen, fuel cell for the transport and power generation sector. Three, promotion of advanced next generation trans transportation technologies such as electric vehicles and hybrid electric vehicles. Four, exploring the possibility of using LPG to fuel farm equipment engines in the agricultural sector. Five, prototyping of solar assisted plug-in electric motor powered boat, which will identify options for powering motorized boat through solar, photovoltaic panels, and storage batteries. This will be done through the Memorandum of Agreement between DOE and the DOEST PCIE RRD. Six, prototyping of human kinetic energy harvesting equipment is another program of the DOE that aims to use ambient energy for small and mobile equipment sourced or generated from human motion. Seven, determining the applicability of potential technologies like carbon capture utilization and storage which removes carbon dioxide emissions from utilization of coal in power generation and industrial processes like cement manufacturing. Eight, adoption of the guidelines on energy conserving design of buildings, which encourages and promotes energy conserving design of buildings to reduce energy use, which uh, with due regard to cost effectiveness building function, comfort, health, safety, and productivity of the occupants. Nine, mainstreaming of energy efficiency and conservation programs for local government units, academes, and the air and sea transport sectors. Ten, institutionalizing the energy efficiency and conservation knowledge management system and developing advanced research and development capacity for energy efficiency and conservation, which will, which will be done through institutional capacity building, development of resource de database, strengthening of advocacy initiatives, sharing of best practices, and promoting consumer engagement. 11. Pursue the implementation of a memorandum of agreement between the Department of Agriculture to develop and implement comprehensive renewable energy programs and projects for the agriculture and fisheries sector as part of the National Renewable Energy Program and Food Security Program. This partnership will boost the country's energy and food security. 12. The Energy Virtual One-Stop Shop, which advocates the timely and efficient processing of energy applications as well as it provides a paperless and electronic application and processing system that serves as a single gateway. Madam Isha, and to conclude our short message, I would like to share our appreciation for this platform where we can all contribute our ideas, initiatives, and commitments to help level up the country's capacity for innovation as measured by the Global Innovate Innovative Index. Please watch out for the ICT synergies with energy. And from here on, we will all be all ears to everyone's presentation. Maraming maraming salamat, mabuhay po tayong lahat. Thank you, 
There might have been some technical difficulties. Apologies for that. The message you've just heard is from the Department of Energy under Secretary Felix William D. Fuentebella, who represents Secretary Alfonso, Alfonso G. Cusi. Thank you, Under Secretary, for your message. Now, to hear, let us um, to hear the message of Secretary William D. Dar from the Department of Agriculture. Good morning, Secretary Dar. Magandang araw po sa ating lahat. The Global Innovation Index, GII, has produced a holistic framework for measuring the world's countries and its economies through innovational measures, environments, and outputs. It provides detailed information on innovation, which is the central driver of economic growth and development and assist economies in evaluating their innovation performance and allow them to make informed policy considerations. For the past few years, the Philippines have been slowly rising from the GII report from ranking 73rd place in 2018 and 54th place in 2019 to 58th place in 2020. However, the amplitude of the crisis created by COVID-19 has engulfed many countries in a wave of emergencies. As a result, countries and corporations alike will find it harder to pursue investments and innovation. But every crisis brings opportunities and room for greater innovation. In the Philippines, we have continued to empower our more industry, academe, government, R4D, Institute collaboration to leverage the Philippine economy and enable the small and medium enterprises to do their in-house R4D. We are hopeful that this year's GII report will recognize our innovative efforts for this year. And so let me take this opportunity to congratulate all the national agencies led by the Department of Science and Technology under the leadership of Secretary Boy de la Peña and for all your efforts in taking the nation to a better economic scenario for the millions of Filipino people. Babuhay kayong lahat. God bless us all. Thank you, Secretary Dar, for your inspiring message. As we move along, let us now hear from Secretary Arthur P. Tugade from the Department of Transportation, as represented by Assistant Secretary Maria Sheila G. Napala. Good morning, Assistant Secretary. Good morning, everybody. And uh, on behalf of our Secretary and the Department of Transportation, greetings to everybody and to the cabinet members to SEC, um, uh, SEC de la Peña, the, the DOS, this to SEC Rowena Guevara. Thank you for this opportunity to join this platform. So we would like to thank everybody for this opportunity to join. In accordance with this mandate, to promote, develop, and regulate dependable and coordinated network of transportation systems, the Department of Transportation expresses its full support and commitment in achieving the sectoral goals and targets of the science, technology, and innovation sector. More so that the prolonged pandemic has highlighted the importance of science, technology, and innovation, not only to recover better from the crisis, but also to address other emerging global challenges. 
Presently, the Department of Transportation has multiple and varied programs, projects, and activities that contribute to the achievement of a seamless, smart transportation. The fleet modernization component of the Public Utilities Vehicle Modernization Program, for instance, aims to enhance safety, convenience, comfort, security, and environment friendliness of public utility vehicles through the utilization of technology such as the automatic fare collection system, use of alternative fuels, and automated braking system. Meanwhile, the Central Public Utility Vehicle Monitoring System of the LTFRD aims to monitor the movement of public utility vehicles in real time through the use of onboard global positioning system. We also have the Public Transport Information Management System, which aims to properly regulate road-based public transport and develop a more responsive planning of transport service through accurate and timely information on vehicle location and level of service. On our other innovative projects of the department include the 13.18 kilometer of segregated lane of the Cebu Bus Rapid Transit System, the Davao High Priority Bus System of Interconnected Bus to be prioritized um, along the 626 road network, the Metro Manila Intelligent Transport System and the Metro Cebu Intelligent Transport System, which aim to determine the appropriate ITS solutions to address traffic management issues in the city. We also have the activation of the cycling route map in digital platform to promote active transport and the mobile big data for transport planning to foster smart governance practices in ASEAN countries. The DOTR continues to strengthen its linkages, linkages among innovation actors in the recent years. For instance, the Maritime Industry Authority has been working alongside with the Department of Science and Technology through an agreement that puts forward the science and technology for maritime transport applications, pushing for innovations on alternative fuels and energy efficient water transport technology renewable energy, modernization of merchant fleets, and intelligent transport systems, as well as modernization of maritime research and development centers. The automated guideway transit, the Kutan track project, on the other hand, is a collaborative research and development which aims to build an alternative and economical transit system model for the modernization of its traffic and pedestrian configurations utility requirements and layout transportation systems, as well as other physical plans. The importance of science, technology, and innovation has been especially noticed in the wake of the COVID pandemic. The department has undertaken steps to maximize the use of digital technology in the transport sector's COVID-19 response, including social distancing measures and limited business and office operations. That necessitated the acceleration of digitization of government processes and shift to online and contactless transactions to sustain the delivery of services. Digitization of internal processes within the department, such as the performance monitoring, contact tracing, and online management systems have also been implemented. To reduce processing time and cut bureaucratic red tape in in government and sections related to relating to business pursuant to RA 110C2, Ease of Doing Business and Efficient Governance, Government Service Delivery Act, the Land Transportation Management System made the renewal of licenses, revision of records, request of certificate of no apprehension, and other miscellaneous transactions simpler, faster, and more efficient. Meanwhile, the public transport online processing system launched in June of 2020 at the height of the pandemic reduced in-person activities in processing franchise-related requests by transport stakeholders. Science, technology, and innovation have proven to bring widespread benefits to the transport sector. This department recognizes 
that embracing and investing in technological innovations will bring significant improvements in addressing public transport related concerns, including accessibility, connectivity, availability, overcrowding, safety, security, and reliability. In addition, the pandemic has demonstrated that efficient and intelligent transport systems are critical to enable the economy to function despite quarantine measures. Yet, while the efforts in these aspects are promising, there's still a lot to be done. Envisioning transformational change in the transport sector, the Department of Transportation will remain committed and will continue to be at the forefront in fostering a science, technology, and innovation ecosystems in the Philippines. Let us continue to leverage technology to improve our people's lives. Thank you very much, and please keep safe. Thank you for your time, Assistant Secretary. Thank you for the innovative initiatives of the department to ease our concerns on transportation. Thank you so much to our very inspiring leaders for those messages. Truly, the development of the Philippine innovation landscape will not move forward without your support. Moving along, as we take pride in our country's commitment to development, Allow me to share with you this short clip. Now, for the part that we have all been waiting for, to present the Global Innovation Index 2021, may I call on the Head of Section in Economics and Statistics Division and co-editor of GII at the World Intellectual Property Organization, Dr. Sacha Wunsch Vincent. Let us give him a big hand. Dear uh, Secretary de la Peña, uh, dear uh, Yusek Guevara, dear uh, secretaries from the other parts of the, the Filipino government, uh, all um, agencies and institutions um, that I've met uh, in February last year, my last uh, mission indeed, um, a welcome um, today. And it gives me great pleasure to address uh, this uh, prestigious gathering. Now look, um, a few hours ago, um, we finished the global press conference for the Global Innovation Index launch. And in the few short minutes uh, that we had, uh, Philippines came up twice. Uh, once by my director general in praising the Philippines for having used uh, the GII in its innovation law for monitoring 
uh, the uh, progress uh, of uh, the Philippines on innovation, number one. And second, a very important one uh, in my presentation, where actually I said that something systemic changes in the global innovation landscape, because now beyond China, you have four other middle income economies that really change the innovation landscape. One is Turkey, the other one is Vietnam, the third one is India, and the fourth one you'll be happy to hear is the Philippines. Now we call them the TV IIPs, the TWIPs. So uh, Philippines is, is, is part of this. Uh, now, let me now turn to the um, results of the GII. First, um, we assess the impact of the pandemic on the global innovation landscape. As you will remember from my presentation last year to you, innovation has been at an all-time peak, um, all-time height um, in 2019. So we went really into the crisis, uh, you know, with great fanfare in terms of R&D expenditures, venture capital, and IP filings. So the question really was before us, how is the pandemic unsettling this? If history is any guide, it should have a dramatic negative impact uh, on global innovation. Now, the data that we present uh, yesterday and today in the GII shows the opposite and optimism. So first and foremost, many of the governments around the world, the top R&D spenders are actually maintaining and increasing their R&D budget, including the US, uh, Australia, and, and these nations. We hope that Philippines is gonna do the same. That's number one. And second, on the corporate R&D level, you know, the top R&D spenders, we see that the majority uh, of these companies increase by 10% their R&D expenditures worldwide. Uh, there are differences, of course, uh, within and throughout sectors, the ICT hardware sector, software sector, and also the pharmaceutical and chemical industry, Merck, Apple, NVIDIA, they're all increasing their R&D budgets. But there are also negative news on other fronts, such as in aviation, you know, transport, uh, and also more surprisingly, consumer goods such as L'Oréal. Uh, on the country level, um, this positive news also has to be nuanced because obviously uh, a vast majority of countries, uh, seven out of 10 countries in the world, still only spend uh, less than 1% of their GDP on R&D. So these countries uh, might feel uh, a financial crunch that will impact um, you know, their R&D budgets in, in, in the near future. And this is where it's gonna be critical to see what will happen uh, with respect to the Philippines in particular. I know that uh, Secretary de la Pena and other secretaries have tried to defend increasing R&D budgets. Uh, and we hope that this will be the case in, in the years to come despite of these credit crunches. Now, um, let me turn briefly to the headline results um, of the Global Innovation Index rankings this year, um, and then uh, turn to the Philippines in particular. Now, in terms of the uh, global rankings, it's Switzerland, uh, Sweden, uh, the United States, and UK still in the top four of the GII, so that is quite a solid um, you know, defense of their top ranks. Big news is Korea, uh, jumping not only in the top 10, but on number five slot this year. Then there is news that relate to China from 14th slot to the 12th slot this year. So the, you know, the, the progress there is relentless, um, you know, after a uh, standstill last year, still uh, China moving up, only middle income countries still in the top uh, 30. And the last point is one that I mentioned earlier, um, you know, that a few countries, we single out four in particular, Turkey, Vietnam, India, and the Philippines, that if you have a 10 year decade long horizon in front of you, are really changing the innovation landscape. Now I know that the Filipino rank has gone down one this year, uh, but frankly, as I'll discuss in a moment, uh, you know, this is still within statistical uncertainty bounds. Uh, it's not something that you need to worry about um, too much. What you do need to worry about, in my humble opinion, is this uh, progressive increase um, over the next um, next few years. With this, let me finish uh, with a few observations on the Philippines itself. So as, you, as, I, as I said, consistent increase over the decades, it's still fourth among the middle income economies, 17s in Southeast Asia. So it's big progress there. 
still overperforming, and this is a recent phenomenon relative to the, its level of development, so please keep this up. Then in terms of the rankings on the pillar level, it hasn't really changed much as compared to, to last year when I presented to you and the year before. So it's knowledge and technology outputs where you perform most strongly. We know this is partly linked to your strong role in ICT and other assembly factors. So I guess my main message to the Philippines last year and this year was to grow the domestic capacity, in particular as we have learned that if pandemics strike, global value chains collapse. So um, suddenly you're, 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 you're left with nothing for a little while uh, in terms of economic activity. So it's very important to build this domestic innovation capacity. As weakest, we still have market sophistication, uh, in particular um, uh, points that relate to innovation finance. This hasn't changed. Um, infrastructure hasn't changed either in institutions. So I, um, you know, those are the, the areas um, where uh, we have to work on strongly. Uh, to conclude, also relative to last year, uh, we've seen that the entrepreneurship environment is still kind of relatively weak relative to other economies of your um, innovation prowess. So we encourage you to, um, to check this out and, and also to make further um, improvements in the area of human capital and education and innovation finance, as I said, um, you know. Well, we are WIPO, so um, I'm, I also looked a little bit in detail on your IP filings. There is progress on this front in terms of patent filings, trademark filings, but same message as last year, this could be reinforced with the great work that is going on in your IP office and in the relevant department. So I would encourage that together, uh, we worked out in 2021, first half of 2022, ways to improve your, inc your usage of IP uh, in the context of the Filipino Innovation Act as well. So uh, let me conclude here. Um, so congratulations, although it's uh, one position back, I think the big and high level news that we sent over the Philippines uh, in the press conference, the global press conferences and the global news uh, is extremely positive. Um, obviously, uh, let's make sure that it's not minus five or 10 slots uh, well, next year, you know, so we shouldn't um, just um, expect for this growth of stability to maintain. Everybody is going to work hard to defend their innovation ranking. We are there to help you, um, if you like, to further um, improve on your innovation uh, rankings. Congratulations again and uh, all the best uh, to Manila. Thank you very much, Secretary Pena, in particular, for all your hard work. Thank you, Dr. Sacha. You've heard it, folks. The Philippines ranked 51st this 2021. We may have slipped a notch, but we remain optimistic. We all have experienced great hurdles, particularly during the past year because of the global health pandemic, yet this has not deterred us. We keep on finding new ways to do things and continue working within the boundaries of the new normal. And now, capping off this celebration of triumph, let us hear Dr. Rowena Cristina L. Guevara, DOST Undersecretary for Research and Development. Let us all give her a virtual round of applause. Assistant Director General Marco M. Aleman, IP and Innovation Ecosystem Sector of the World Intellectual Property Organization, or WIPO. Dr. Sacha Wunz Vincent, Head of Section, Economics and Statistics Division at the WIPO, and Co-Editor of the Global Innovation Index. Secretary Fortunato T. De La Pena, Secretary Ramon Lopez, Director General Roel Barba, and members of the executive branch of the Philippines participating in today's event who are part of the whole of government approach in fostering the innovation ecosystem of the country, co-workers in government, our friends from media, ladies and gentlemen, magandang agam po sa ating lahat. In 2020, the Philippines gave a stellar performance by reaching its highest mark in the Global Innovation Index report. In just six years, the country pushed its way to the 50th 
place among 131 countries in the world from being 100th place in 2014. Although a rank in the GII 2021 of number 51 among 132 countries is one step back from the upward trajectory since 2014, I believe we are still an innovation overachiever, delivering far more than is expected. The Philippines GII 2021 ranking shows that even though our innovation input went down from 70 in 2020 to 72 in 2021, our innovation output went up from number 41 in 2020 to number 40 in 2021. We are truly an efficient innovator, and I believe the pandemic has emphasized this characteristic of the Filipino, efficient Philippine innovation. As mentioned by ADG Aleman earlier, the GII is a central driver for economic growth. We fully agree that the report is not just a theoretical rank, but it has real and concrete impact to the Philippines and the world. I am glad that despite our limitations, we ranked fourth among the 34 lower middle income group economies in the GII relative to our GDP. The Philippines' performance is above expectations for its level of development. Also, according to the report, the Philippines produces more innovation outputs relative to its level of innovation investments. The Philippines performs above the regional average in two pillars, namely business sophistication and knowledge and technology outputs. However, these are not maximized due to our weaknesses in investment and credit. Since 2007, the budget for research and development dramatically increased and averaged at about 0.65% of the national budget or the Government Appropriations Act. However, the share of R&D in government budget in the last two years significantly decreased from 0.76 in 2019 to 0.39 in 2021. Our country's modest investments in R&D can only go so far. As an initiative to sustain innovation efforts, the Department of Science and Technology is lobbying for the passage of the Science for Change Bill. It was approved last Wednesday in the second reading in the House of Representatives and is pending at the Science and Technology Committee in the Senate. With the challenges presented by the pandemic, the Science for Change Bill seeks to address disparity in research and development funding in the regions and the lack of R&D in the private sector. Our goal is to put the Philippines within the UNESCO benchmark for a developing country budget of 1% GDP expenditure on R&D. While waiting for the approval of the Science for Change Bill, the DOSD has funded 38 niche centers in the regions for R&D in 17 regions, deployed 42 R&D leaders in 16 regions, tasked to share their expertise and promote regional development. We have funded 71 collaborative research and development to leverage the Philippine economy or cradle projects, or as we say, R&D partnerships between the private companies and the academe and RDIs, and we also funded three business innovation through s and or BIST projects for three companies in their R&D efforts. The Science for Change Bill's approval would also mean the continuation of the inclusive, equitable, and sustained efforts for innovation given the optimal use of our resources for R&D. I would like to take this opportunity to seek the support of our legislators, the national government agencies, and our friends in media to support the passage of the Science for Change Bill. Innovation is key to national resiliency. I am glad for the continued partnership of DOST with the DA, DENR, DOE, DOH, DFA, DTI, DND, DOTR, DICT, NEDA, IPOFIL, and CHED in improving the Philippine innovation landscape. Thank you for your tireless efforts and sustained support to innovation despite the challenges of the pandemic. I would also like to thank WIPO, ADG Marco Aleman, 
and Dr. Sacha Wons Vincent for continuously providing the information on our country's innovation performance. The GII report inspires us to do better in succeeding years. Filipinos are known to be resilient and resourceful, and moving forward, we will take the country's GII 2021 performance as a challenge and an inspiration for our goal to be in the top 33% of the Global Innovation Index in the near future. Much appreciation is also extended to our friends in media for being our partners in promoting innovation. Maraming salamat at muli magandang agham po sa ating lahat. Thank you, Undersecretary Guevara. Before we move to our Q&A, allow me to acknowledge the presence of uh, DOST Assistant Secretary Leah Buendia and DOST Assistant Secretary Diane Ignacio. We also have within our needs our R&D Council Executive Directors and RDI Directors who will be part of our panelists. We have PCHRD Executive Director Jaime Montoya, NRCP Executive Director Mayet Sumagaysay, PICARD Executive Director Reynaldo Ebora, MIRD Director Bob Dizon, ITDI Director Annabel Briones, FNRI Director Imelda Agdepa, FPRDI Director Romulo T. Agangan, ASTI Director France De Leon, and PPRI Director Celia Elumba. We are now open to questions from our media partners. Before asking the question, may I request you to state your name, affiliation, and the person you are directing your question to. Again, as I've mentioned, for our attendees in the Zoom webinar, you may use the Q&A tab or the chat box to type in your questions. For those watching us live, via Facebook, send in your questions by typing in your uh, comments in the comment section. For um, our first question, it is from, it is for Secretary Boy de la Peña. Um, it is from Mr. Monsi Serrano from the Philippine Business and News. The question is, with the lower inputs we have now that bring our rank to 51st from 50th, what did our policymakers learn from this? What would be, what would be the action plans in, term, in terms of supporting our research and development, which has been in forefront of innovation amidst the pandemic and slashed on? Thank you so much and congratulations to the output ranking. Thank you for that uh, question, and uh, I have um, uh, brief uh, responses to that. First of all, uh, we have seen, particularly during our budget hearing at the uh, at the House of Representatives, how all of the uh, congressmen who attended our uh, uh, budget hearing expressed their support and. Uh, their desire to add on to the budget uh, that has been presented to them. Uh, we hope that the uh, Senate will uh, do likewise because we know that uh, uh, the legislature can still add to the national expenditure plan that has been uh, presented before them. Uh, the second one is, uh, as mentioned by Undersecretary Guevara, uh, we hope that uh, we can have the Science for Change Bill approved uh, uh, before the, uh, this Congress uh, adjourns because it will uh, assure us of the resources 
that we will in turn use in leveraging particularly for public private sector cooperation. We need to encourage the cooperation uh, between the private and the public sector and uh, it uh, requires some uh, uh, support from uh, the national government uh, agencies like the OST. We are also, well, this is already something that has been happening and uh, we are very happy that our partner national agencies, uh, particularly those which are represented in our governing councils, like uh, uh, the DOH, the uh, Department of Trade and Industry, the PWH, the Department of Transportation, uh, Environment and Natural Resources, Energy, have been putting in resources also to R&D, whereas before, the projects that we support uh, uh, used up, uh, I mean, were supported mainly by the DOST grants uh, in aid. Now we have already uh, the, uh, the uh, contributions coming from the uh, line departments uh, in, in doing research that are in line with their particular sector. And uh, perhaps I, uh, I would like to also uh, suggest uh, uh, and ask the help of our NEDA, our DBM, uh, the whole of the economic development cluster to, to use a, a uh, more scientific based approach in the allocation of national resources. Thank you very much. Thank you, Secretary. We would also like to welcome within our needs uh, Director of TAPI, Romeo. Uh, Director Romeo. All right, so for our next question, we have. This is addressed for Yusek Guevara. It is from Ms. Jasmine Romero of ABS-CBN News. What is the significance of the GII ranking to ordinary Filipinos and the effect of it on the science community? Ordinary Filipinos, what the GII ranking of the Philippines is saying is that in the entire world, we are above the 50% mark in terms of innovating, eh ka nga, madiskarte talaga ang mga Pilipino. So this is an affirmation. For the science and technology community, if you look in detail at the GII 2021 report, you will see the specific items where we are weak. As the secretary mentioned, we are weak in terms of investments in research and development and in the utilization of intellectual property. As a we move towards uh, 2022, we are encouraging our researchers to make sure that once they finish their R&D projects, they have to transfer the technology. And there are three ways of transferring such technology. One could be by commercialization or licensing. Second one would be by uh, extension work. And the third one is for public good when it's given away for free. We have already uh, implemented with a partnership with IPOFIL, what we call the uh, superhighway for intellectual property rights protection for our researchers. And once they do that first step, they have to do the next steps, which is the transfer of the technology. Once we do that, our ranking in the Global Innovation Index will improve. Thank you. Thank you, Undersecretary Guevara. Um, we would also like to acknowledge the presence of Assistant Secretary Roberto G. Manalo and Assistant Director Tanya Gaurano, both from the Department of Foreign Affairs. Good morning, sir. Um, would you like to give a short message prior to continuing the Q&A? All right. If none, I would continue with the next question. This is again addressed to Undersecretary uh, Guevara. Um, the question is, R&D is essential in increasing innovation outputs in the country. How can we ensure funding for more R&D projects and programs and improve the science, technology, and innovation human resources in the future? Thank you for that question. But before I answer, I would like to acknowledge the presence of Undersecretary Rafaelita Aldaba, my very good partner at the Department of Trade and Industry. Whenever we do innovation, we work together. Thank you for being here, uh, Yusek Fita. To answer that question, I have only one answer. 
the passage of the Science for Change Bill is the way to go to guarantee that research and development in the country will be funded. Uh, the Science for Change Bill, while most people think of it as you know, increasing the R&D funding, actually has two very important components. First one is that we are increasing the innovation ecosystem by making sure that the disparity in R&D funding across regions is solved. Meaning to say, usually we have funding for Central Luzon, NCR, and for Calabarzon for research and development. But we believe that we have equally talented researchers in all the other 14 regions. So the science for change will deliberately uh, solve the disparity problem by establishing niche centers in the regions for R&D, because once you have the infrastructure for R&D, the researchers will be able to work. Second, we will have the cradle or collaborative research and development to leverage a Philippine economy, which will encourage industry to do R&D. So in cradle, meron silang partnership with the academe to make sure that if they don't have the R&D capability, they can rely on the academe to solve their problems through R&D. Third, we have the RD leader, which is a way of sending out uh, veteran researchers to universities and colleges that need assistance to beef up their R&D. And lastly, the business innovation through science and technology or BIS program will help the risk or remove the risk for investing in R&D for the private sector by DOST taking the cudgels for them in funding R&D at the beginning. And secondly, you talk about human resource. You know, DOST spends 25% of its budget on s and human resource development. In the last five years, we have been producing 400 to 500 MS and PhD graduates per year. We need to be able to retain this as and the human resource in the country in order for us to truly innovate. And I think we need to encourage our private sector to avail of the services of these MS and PhD graduates so that we'll be able to retain them and in the future, improve our ranking in the Global Innovation Index. Thank you for that question. Thank you, Undersecretary. For um, our next question, this is for Yusek Aldaba of uh, DPI. It is from Jasmine Romero of ABS-CBN News. Some scientists have complained about difficulties in utilizing IPP. How can this be made easier and less costly for Filipino innovators and inventors? It, was that for me or uh, probably that's for Director General Barba, for DG Barba. You said FITA, it's investment priority plans, IP. Oh, I thought it was, <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> anyway, um, regard the difficulties in registering with uh, BOI, um, we are uh, registering um, products that are uh, already at the commercialization stage. So um, if, uh, the uh, the idea if um, the product is already uh, going to be commercialized then they can register with uh, boi but if uh, they're not yet in the commercialization phase then i think uh, all the support that they would need would still be coming from uh, the dost diba yusek gev <laughs> Yeah. Ganun, ang, ganun po yung hatian namin ng trabaho ng, uh, ng DOST. So hanggat na doon ka pa po sa ideation, conceptualization, sa R&D phase, then you will go to DOST for support. And um, once you uh, are ready to uh, get your IP, then you would go to IPOFIL. Um, and once you're ready to commercialize, then you go to BOI. And nandun po yung mga um, incentives na nakalaan for all uh, creative and innovative mm -hmm. products and services that uh, our researchers as well as uh, industries are uh, coming up with. Um, hindi lang po maliwanag sa question kung ano po exactly yung uh, difficulties in terms of uh, the registration or in terms kung ito po ba yung mga 
uh, requirements, mga paper requirements. Uh, of course, we need to uh, do a lot of validation and vetting dahil mga incentives din po naman na uh, malaki po yung makukuha from uh, this uh, incentive such as uh, um, up to six years. Yung ngayon po, merong, if it's a pioneer uh, product, um, then... Um, Ah, wala na pala. That was before, no? So with the with the create with the create act, uh, pare parehas na po actually yung mga incentives na ibinibigay natin. And in fact, pinakamataas na incentives ang uh, ibinibigay sa mga innovative uh, products and services. Do let us know kung ano po exactly yung mga difficulties and. Uh, um, just uh, send us an email. Pwede po kayong pumunta dun sa aming site. Nandun po lahat ng email uh, addresses mm. ng mga uh, officials. Yusek Gev, can I? Yes, of course. Yes, uh, in addition to what uh, Yusek Fita said, uh, under the latest uh, IPP po natin, qualified na po ang, ano, no? ang patents, uh, fun, basta uncommercialized. No? Uh, so one, and second, uh, qualified na rin po yung mga research institutions like our innovation and uh, technology offices no, to apply for incentives under the IPP by the Board of Investments. Wow, thank so yan po yung dalawang uh, developments. Thank you po. For our uh, next question, all the panelists may answer or among of you may answer. This is from Annabel Surara from Radio Aguila. Ano-ano ang batayan para tumaas ang ranking ng isang bansa sa GII? Ano ang benepisyo nito sa ordinaryong mamamayan? Sek boy, paki I, I can start. Oh. So as I uh, indicated, uh, indicated in the presentation earlier, there are so-called uh, innovation pillars that are uh, uh, being monitored. And uh, under each innovation pillar, there are specific items that they monitor. Uh, so the uh, pillars are actually uh, categorized into the innovation uh, outputs okay, and the innovation uh, inputs as uh, uh, was reported, we, we uh, ranked higher than average and uh, we even improved you know, in the innovation outputs, but uh, we had a slight uh, decline in the innovation inputs. So by, by uh, what exactly are these uh, uh, pillars? So in the innovation uh, outputs, this will include the uh, knowledge and uh, technology outputs. And it also includes the uh, diffusion of uh, technologies and uh, knowledge. And uh, under the innovation uh, inputs, of course, we have uh, uh, the um, we have the market sophistication. We also have the uh, our uh, uh, human resource uh, and uh, research uh, uh, inputs. Okay, so this. These are uh, the statistics that count the number of researchers and count how much we invest in R&D per GDP. Okay? And we have the infrastructure, for example, uh, the mention earlier of uh, uh, Secretary uh, Lopez, uh, like uh, the need to improve our uh, access to credit is uh, something that uh, is also, also uh, included. And, uh, uh, the institutions that are involved. So they, they look at the different institutions uh, that are contributing to innovation. So uh, these are the criteria where we are uh, rated. And therefore, when, when we already know that we are uh, uh, below average or uh, uh, shall we say uh, not improving, uh, this is the, uh, a reminder that we should uh, do something particularly the agencies concerned for these particular pillars uh, to exert their best to uh, improve. If I may also add, uh, there are things that can sometimes work against us, like uh, if the statistics uh, for particular factors are not updated, then uh, they use the old statistics and uh, that is very disadvantageous to us. So these are all, I think, uh, it has a, a meaning for all of us, okay? Uh, even to ordinary citizens because innovations can also come from the grassroots. Thank you very much. 
Thank you, Sek. Yes, po. Um, you, Sek Tita. Yeah, just to add to what um, Sek uh, Boy uh, already mentioned, uh, maybe I, I would want to uh, connect the uh, innovation with uh, the production of uh, more goods, more products, um, quality products that are uh, arising from all the R&D investments and uh, innovation uh, that's going on within the economy. Um, ano po kasi yan eh? So kung marami tayong innovation, kung marami pong investments sa R&D, kaya po kailangan, kailangan nagtutulungan yung mga ahensya, DOSD, DTI, IPOFIL, and the other government agencies in terms of supporting yung mga ino um, innovation uh, initiatives. Mas marami pong uh, mga products and services na pwede nating ma-manufacture, na pwede nating i-produce dito sa bansa. And um, for as long as we have this uh, innovation ecosystem, na ang gusto nga natin more inclusive no na um, ecosystem, then uh, ang magiging effect po nito or ang magiging result is uh, mas maraming investments ang papaso. And pag maraming investments, mas maraming trabaho, mas maraming trabaho, mas maraming produkto. Pag maraming produkto, bababa ba ang presyo. So that means um, at the end of the day, tayo pong mga consumers ang nagbe-benefit from all these uh, innovations that are happening, that are taking place uh, in the country that all government agencies are supporting. Tulong-tulong naman po yan, like what I've said, since it's an ecosystem, kailangan yung infrastructure nandyan, kailangan yung business environment, yung ating business climate ay uh, friendly at uh, makaka-attract talaga ng investment. And at the same time, yung uh, pondo natin for R&D dapat po nandyan and all the necessary support such that malilink pong mabuti yung ating mga uh, universities, yung mga researchers with industry para po yung mga ginagawang research talagang yun yung mga uh, problema na nararanasan ng isang industriya or ng society para yung solution na gagawin na mati-turn into product talaga pong magiging useful siya and kung useful siya at kinakailangan alam natin na ide-demand ang market, doon po papasok ang investments. Thank you po, Yusek. Before we move into our uh, last question, I would like to acknowledge the presence of Undersecretary Jim Sampulna from the Department of Environment and Natural Resources. Good morning, sir. And uh, for our last question, any of the panelists answer? Despite the difficult conditions and change in the administration in the near future, how do we proceed in improving our GII ranking? Are there plans in place moving forward and for continuity? I think uh, uh, the answers to those questions are similar to the answers that were already given uh, in previous uh, questions. But uh, definitely uh, one of them is to uh, have uh, uh, policies that uh, will actually strengthen uh, the pillars where we are weak. Secondly, definitely we, we already know that we are weak in investments and uh, uh, no matter how efficient we are in, in transforming our uh, uh, limited resources to knowledge and technology outputs, uh, there is still a limit to the kind of efficiency that we can have. Still, we need more inputs. And uh, this is where I have been suggesting, I hope the allocation of our budget can be approached in a more scientific manner. Thank you. If I may add to the Secretary's answer, in anticipation of an, a very uh, a better investment scenario for R&D, we are in the process of preparing the harmonized national R&D agenda 2022 to 2028. And we are also launching the long-term R&D programs of the Department of Science and Technology. We believe that if you have programs, once you have the money, you should be able to implement these programs. But planning for these programs take a long time. So in preparation for the change in administration next year, we are now in the process of coming up with the harmonized national R&D agenda and the long-term R&D programs of the Department of Science and Technology. Thank you. Yeah, I, if I may add also that uh, 
Uh, this is a follow-up to what uh, Yusek Pita earlier mentioned about producing more. And uh, I think it has something to do with uh, uh, working on a whole of government approach because, you know, when the technologies are out, uh, we have demonstrated that they are good. I think uh, the rollout uh, can, can, can really be handled more efficiently by the line agencies, whether it is in agriculture, in manufacturing, in uh, services, and uh, even at the local government uh, unit. So the uh, whole of government approach in this uh, uh, innovation ranking is very, very important. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary and Andrew Secretary. Before I end the question and answer, Portion, allow me to read a message from one of our Balik scientists, um, Dr. Jonel Saludes. One of the hallmarks of the excellent and visionary leadership of DOST Secretary De La Peña and Undersecretary Guevara is the creation of the Science for Change program that includes Cradle, NICER, RDLEAD, and BIST. The effect of Science for Change program is already felt by Filipinos especially in the countryside, which I could attest being a Balik scientist based in the province. I hope the Congress is giving priority and will act to approve the Science for Change Bill soon, which shall ensure sustainability of the progress that our country has already achieved. Further, this Science for Change Bill shall support and, and enable the Philippines to reach the R&D expenditure of 1% of GDP as recommended by the UN. As R&D investment is already shown to lead to a prosperous economy. In the era of the fourth industrial revolution that is based in the knowledge economy, I hope and pray that the Philippine government will find value in investing in R&D. That wraps up our um, question and answer portion. Before I... Uh, with that, I want to thank you all for joining today's virtual presser. Thank you to our secretaries, undersecretaries, and assistant secretaries, and all our directors. Again, my name is Aidona. Good morning, and have a fruitful day ahead of you. Special thanks to DG Ruel and to Yusek Pita. Maraming salamat. Thank you. Marami pong salamat. Have a good day. Take care, everyone. Gandang agham. Thank you very much, uh, team. Uh, Jeng, Anya.